Hey guys, Scott, Ridgeside Canine. We're going back to the basics. We do a ton of follow-ups with clients and on those follow-ups, we see a lot of just little errors that we can kind of correct for you guys. So we're gonna go over e-collars, proper placement of those e-collars, how to put on an e-collar properly. We're gonna go over slip leads, how to put on a slip lead properly. And the last thing we're gonna do deals with engagement. So let me show you what we have. Now we're gonna go over the e-collar. This is the Garmin Sport Pro. This is the collar that most of our trainers use. There's a great little feature on here, and that's the light. We tell clients that if a dog is going away from you and you cannot see that light as the human, then it's wrong, okay? Oftentimes, we will see people put the e-collar on like this here, okay? And they say, oh, well, I want my dog to see. No need for your dog to see. What the light is used for, hey, here, come here, sit, is to see the dog going away from you. So now, in Callie's sense, sit, sit. It's shining down, and if you swing around to the back of Callie, you can see the reflection of the light coming off. This is imperative. There are a lot of trainers out here that don't put the e-collar on properly. So, with that being said, make sure that the light is facing backwards, and that is used for when Callie's going away, you can tell that she's going away. When she's coming to you, you see a little bit of a reflection. Now we'll go over e-collar positioning. With the light facing backwards or towards the ground, we'll put it on the dog. Now, we'll take this tab right here and we'll typically cut this tab somewhere here and leave it there. Now, the, the way I do this e-collar is if I can fit my two fingers in between the prongs and that, that's a proper fit. This probably should be a little bit tighter on her. Uh, probably one notch or two notches more, but the collar does not have to be super tight. So too loose, it's a problem. Too tight, it's a problem. You really want to get that nice fit. With that being said, this is typically where a collar is going to be. Um, either side, doesn't matter. Um, gravity will usually do its job and it'll take it down there and that will be the other way. Now, there's different ways to do with a collar. You could put it on the back of the neck, you can put it on the sides. There's different positional things that you can do. But for our pet owners, that's typically the way we want them to wear their collar. All right, guys, now we're gonna go over the slip lead. This right here, I feel, is one of the most important pieces of equipment for a dog trainer, or a dog owner, for that matter. Um, super inexpensive, easy to use, but incredible results from this. So, to put a slip lead on, what we're gonna do is make a P for puppy, right? So, we're gonna put that P, and we're gonna come over the top of the dog, I'm gonna slide this down here. Now, it's positioned on the dog properly, and I move to here, and this is how we're gonna do. You can get a good correction from here. Come on, uh-uh. Good. Here. Sit. So you can see that the top of the slip lead goes over the top, the grommet is here, and it's facing me. So that right there is the proper way to put on a slip lead. Now, this is a big one. We talk about engagement, right? We want our dogs to be engaged with us. Here, Callie's engaged with me. Now, too many people do this. How is my dog going to engage with me if she can't see through these? Right? Super important. This is where everything comes from. This doesn't allow 85, 90% of what you want to give to your dog. So here, these have got to go. Yes!
So there you have it, pretty basic stuff, but those are three common things that we see with our clients during follow-ups and things of that nature. Ridgeside Canine, what can we do for you and your family?